Hey guys, Forrest with Gearful here, and we're in the Gearful studio today. I've just came back home from a Idaho backcountry rifle mule deer hunt with my brother, and this is my mid-season gear dump. For us, what that means is anywhere from October 1st through mid-November in some years, Intermountain West, specifically on this here Idaho, running elevations from 5,000 to 11,000 feet, overnight lows in the mid-20s, daytime highs anywhere from the mid-40s to even the mid-50s. So those are the parameters for this type of a gear setup. Everything you saw here, I'll run for two to three days in most circumstances, but it'll be the same if I was gonna go 10 or more days. The only difference there would be additional food and a few supplementals and gear such as uh, socks and maybe an additional base layer top just as a nicety. But I carried everything here and additionally uh, with my food, I carried it in the Stone Glacier Sky Talus 6900 bag on the Crux frame. New bag to me, I liked it. I needed a little bit more as far as cubic inches for this trip. Later seasons, greater insulation, greater bulk, shelter especially. But I carried it on the Crux frame and that Crux frame I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to and it, it carries load very, very well. But anyway, we'll go ahead and run through this gear from my left to my right, uh, starting off with the trekking poles. Trekking poles, ran these for two years. These are the Lecky Black Series Carbon trekking poles. I'm cognizant of what I do with my trekking poles when I'm using them because they're carbon and after two years, no issues whatsoever across varying terrain from Idaho to, to Arizona. So those are good to go, highly recommend them. Glassing pad, nothing more than the Thermarest from possibly my youth, cut down for a glassing pad. Uh, nothing too, uh, too, too shiny there. For electronics here on the upper left, I got a few minimalist charging cables, charging cables to go from my anchor power supply to my electronics. Those electronics included a standard Garmin inReach, the Swift Petzl or the Petzl Swift RL uh, headlamp, as well as the Goal Zero Crush Light. But the Goal Zero Crush Light has a solar panel on top. I'll put that outside of my shelter when I leave the shelter in the morning just to get a charge throughout the day and I can use it for greater illumination within the shelter at night. So that's the basics as far as my electronics go. Moving on into the optics. For a tripod setup, just like the early season, I went and continued on with the Tricer BC backcountry tripod. It's good for me and I ran it again with the LP pan head and the Tricer Bino adapter with a simple personalized cord just to ensure when I took it out of my pack at a glassing position, the LP pan head and more specifically the Bino adapter were actually there and I didn't lose them inadvertently on the trail. On my chest was a marsupial medium sized Bino harness with an accessory pouch off the left and a rangefinder pouch off to the right. Within there, a pair of Vortex Razor UHD 10x42 binos, and I did not take a spotter on this trip because my brother did, and I used that to my weight advantage. In that accessory pouch off to the left, that's fully dedicated to extra rounds for the entire duration of the trip for, a, uh, for my 6.5 PRC. And then a lens pin off to the left, wind checker off to the right, formal legalities in that mesh, pack, uh, mesh pouch on the back, Extra battery on the front for the rangefinder, chapstick, things of that nature. And then for the rangefinder specifically, nothing more than a Vortex Ranger 1300. Definitely lacking, but still capable uh, when compared to the Gunworks Climber 6.5 PRC I was fortunate enough to have in my hand. So that's my optics setup. This white pouch here is my Possibles kit. Weighs in at one pound, nine ounces. It's a little bit heavier than compared to some other people, but I've used this pretty much same setup for, for quite some time now. And I've never come across any situation where I couldn't take care of that, which was unexpected. We've done a separate video on this possible pouch, this contingency kit. We'll go ahead and link that here if you care to see the, the contents within. For a stove, I kept the same stove that I ran in the early season. This is the Jetboil Stash with a full new mid-size fuel canister within and a small compact Bic lighter just for convenience, just because the weight penalty is not much to speak to. I like that system. The packability is, a, is an improvement over the flash, which I ran before this, and the weight is pretty minimal, uh, to be honest, with the pot that's included. For water on this trip, those daytime highs, again, mid-40s to mid-50s even, overnight lows around mid-20s. We did have a 400 to 500 foot elevation loss to get water and then bring it back up to the spike camp. So I wanted some type of a bulk storage. I went with the MSR Drumlight 6 liter. And what I did is I hung that in a tree to where it's going to get first light in the morning and last light in the evening, but it worked out very well. Any freezing that I was seeing was pretty minimal, honestly, but for water purification, SteriPen Classic, batteries changed out at the front of it or at the beginning of every season. 
no issues there. All the water sources that I was expecting to pull from and did pull from were running and clear. So that was enough for me. It's proven enough for me in years past. For on-person water storage throughout uh, every day, were two Nalgene's. These are the Gearful uh, Nalgene's there with human gear lids on the top, just for ease of use. You have wide mouth access when you want to fill it or add a drink mix, for example, but then you can still get a smaller orifice by taking off the top cap when you're pulling it out of your pouch on the go. So if you're anything like me, you're not spilling it all over your front side and you can conserve that water when water comes at a premium. So two Nalgene's for on person. Go ahead and move on into shelter. Now my brother and I generally run a teepee with a stove for mid season, late season hunts. But on this one, we actually decided to go with one person tents just to get a little bit more of a, of a change to our efforts. I went as I did in the spring this year with the Stone Glacier Sky Solace one person tent. For me, what's in here is about a four pound system. Good vestibule access and or deletion depending upon where you're gonna use it on the mountain. And then also within the actual main shelter, good drafting, plenty of room, but not too much room for one person usage and immediate gear. What's good about this tent is from the main shelter to the vestibule, either vestibule you may choose to use or both, is you can access it freely from within the main shelter through a drawstring orifice on the side. You can even pull a full size pack in through the side panel. So that was good to go there. For a sleep system, what I have here is the same system I ran, in, or what the same sleeping bag I ran in the early season, but this is the Stone Glacier Chilkoot 15. Suitable for the use application there in the Idaho mountains and I carried it in the Sea to Summit 13 liter EVAC ultralight compression dry bag just for peace of mind that if weather were to roll in, the sleeping bag is not gonna become compromised with rain and moisture. So that's the Chilkoot 15 there. For a sleeping mat, I dished the cot. Cots are not really conducive to mid and late season hunts just because of the uh, lack of warming properties that they're going to provide, but this is the Thermorest um, Neo Air X Lite. This is a regular size pad. This system here is about 12 ounces, gives you about two to two and a half inches of lift up off the ground. That's where you're going to get an R value of about four to 4.2. That was good to go. Between that and the Chilkoot 15, overnight lows are about 25 to high 20s, no issues whatsoever, and it's pretty lightweight. I also appreciate that it comes with a pump sack, so at high elevations, I don't have to inflate that sleeping mat manually. I can just use a pump sack. What I have here is a basic rain fly for the Sky Talus 6900 on this particular trip. I didn't actually have to use that. And I always carry with me if it's a day trip or if it's a multi-day trip, I carry some type of a tarp. This is my, the tarp that's most commonly in my pack. This is a Kafaru sheep tarp. It's enough for a hasty shelter should weather roll in. It's enough for two persons in their gear if you have to, but it's more appropriate for one person in their gear. A couple of trekking poles, some guy lines and some rela uh, reliable tent stakes, and you're good to go And just pretty much two minutes. You could probably set that up in some circumstances. My guy lines are always on that tarp. They don't come off, but a few tent stakes up here. Those are a carryover from my Hilleberg tent. Those are a DAC tent stake. Um, very robust, very radius edges, just nice to use and reliable. They're not gonna bend or hurt your hand when you're out there, which is kind of a pain. This little pouch here is my personal first aid kit. Really nothing more than some basic over-the-counter pharmaceuticals, pain relief, cold flu, things of that nature. Basic wound treatment, first aid, uh, band-aids, tweezers, really nothing more than that. Pretty lightweight too. Up here in the front is my kill kit. Just the same kill kit, really, to some regard, as many other hunters of this type. So no shocker there. Now I'll go ahead and transition into the clothing, starting with uh, accessories. So for accessories, what I had on my person more often than not was the Stone Glacier Merca glove, a general utility glove I've had since spring bear of this year. It's been good. It also took the chill off when those temperatures, you know, at first light were around the mid thirties, low thirties. It was enough for me. And I took the altimeter mitts too for the first time. Didn't have to use the outer shell, but the reason I went with these, just, just in case I had to, I had them, but that interior liner, which has down within, is a phenomenal glassing mitt at the same time. I did use those uh, daily up there. So the altimeter mitts there. Other accessories are Marine Corps issued fleece beanie, generally always with me from mid-season and later. A general purpose cloth or schmog. And then also one of my favorites is the SQ2 Alpine Gator. You can see been a rather abusive relationship between myself and these gators just from frequency of use but they've been 100% reliable for me for the last two years. SQ2 Alpine Gators there. On my foot, Idaho 
<clears throat> generally is rarely flat. A lot of those are uh, pretty good inclines. I went with the Brickstall Mountains from Crispy because of a few reasons. I wanted to have a little bit taller boot, so this is a nine inch boot. I wanted to have their ankle bone support system, their ABSS, and this has it. And I didn't have a need for insulation. Personally, this boot was about perfect for that use application. For rain, if it's gonna be multi-day, mid-season especially, I'm gonna take both a, a top and a bottom for rain gear. What I had and I didn't have to use on this trip was an M5 jacket and M5 pants by Stone. I actually used these more frequently in early season than I had to in the mid season, but they're always with me. For clothing that was on person, what I had from the bottom up, aside from the boots, were some darn tough socks. These happen to be the Hiker boot sock midweight with cushion. Darn tough, you really can't go wrong with just about any sock you choose there. So just do your research and find one that suits your, your personal choosing and I'm pretty confident you're gonna be good to go. But from there I had, what I actually have on here today are the de Havilland pants by Stone with the marsupial web belt. Beneath those are the Chinook Merino boxers. I also had the Chinook Merino bottoms just because of no real penalty as far as weight and or packability. And I had them if I wanted to take the chill off in the early mornings, again, didn't have to use them. For my top, I had the Chinook Merino long sleeve. This is the non hoodie. This is just the crew long sleeve. Use that again, five days is not too long in duration, but that Merino, no, it does have odor mitigating properties and it didn't smell too bad. At least in my personal opinion, after that many days. For my mid layer, one of my favorites, uh, Sitka Heavyweight Hoodie. It's a synthetic product. This was on and off my person all throughout every day. What I like about it is whether I pack it loosely within my main bag, if I'm gonna be mobile, or if I you know, just lay it over the pack, if I'm stationary, hang it in a nearby tree. This product dries very quickly, and when I wanna have that added oomph of a mid-layer, the Sika Heavyweight Hoodie is where I go, and it's, it works for me just about every time. Insulation on my person. Really didn't have to use these too much, but these are the Grum and Goose down pants. Brought these just because of the uncertainty that is the weather in that type of an environment. No, uh, no weight penalty, but again, I had them if I wanted to get added warmth in my sleeping bag or if I wanted to have some added warmth from a stationary glassing position. And then that which is almost always with me is the Grumman down jacket by Stone as well. In conclusion, this is my loadout for mid season of this year, 2023. Hope that you found this information useful. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them here in the video in the comments and we'll get back to you or contact us at gearful.com. We'd be happy to help. Please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.